Buying an SSD in 2026 is a little bit interesting because of the AI craze and RAM shortage. Actually, these SSDs are also a little bit of a mix-up and it is confusing. If you want to choose Gen 4 or Gen 5, ooh, for the first time ever, I think we might be able to choose Gen 5 instead of Gen 4. But Kioxia here does not make that simple because they've made a Gen 5 SSD that's called Gen 4. Regardless of the confusion, there might be actually some good news. So let's take a look if this Gen 5 SSD is actually worth buying compared to the others out there. Ah, it's so annoying. I don't want to pay hundreds of dollars to just change my Windows wallpaper just because my Windows isn't licensed. Well, why don't you try Hookies? That's a ton cheaper. And if you use the code TN20, you get it even cheaper. What do you mean? How do I get it and how is it possible? Well, see this video here, or the one you're watching. Yeah. Click in the link on the video description. Add the Windows 11 CD product to the card. Proceed to checkout. Add the code TN20 for the extra discount. So what, the Windows 11 Pro OEM key is just $23.22? <laughs> yeah. Choose the preferred payment option and complete the purchase. The key will be available on the purchased orders in a few moments. Copy the key and paste it into your Windows activation settings and you're all done. Well, that was easy. Is that Ryan Gosling? Uh, um, uh, no. Anyway, by the way, the same discount code also works website-wide. So go check out uh, other products, maybe like Microsoft Office. Firstly, I want to talk about the price because this has changed the most in 2026. The pricing is all over the price and for that reason, I'm going to leave all the different SSDs that I'm talking about in the video description below. So what I recommend you do is wherever you're watching this from, click on any of the SSDs that you are particularly looking for or watching. You'll see in a minute lots of different benchmarks. Check the pricing of this whenever you're watching this video because you might be looking at your SSD what you're thinking of buying but then you realize that something that is actually better is cheaper because SSD pricing is so volatile it just goes up and down all the time so check them out in the video description below. Now some of the specs about this uh, Kioxia Gen 4, Gen 5 really. I think Kioxia needs to change this naming because Xeria plus G4, but this is Gen 5 SSD. So this is PCA Gen 5 X4, so it's four lanes of PCA Gen 5 that go onto this. We get speeds of up to 10,000 megabytes per second, which tells us that it's not particularly the high-end Gen 5 SSD, but somewhere a little bit lower but at the same time, it's higher than the top-end Gen 4 SSD. So that's why I'm curious, how does this perform? This Xeria Plus comes in one terabyte and two terabytes in sizes. It's no four or eight terabytes available. It is only single-sided, nothing underneath. And then on the top, we've got this little sticker, which is supposed to be a little bit of a thermal dissipation as well. But to me, it just looks like a sticker. So then let's take a look at some of the benchmarks. So first looking at sequential read and write speeds, which in most workflows is not actually useful benchmark because it's very rarely that you can actually reach those speeds, even though the drive can do that. If you want to see some of the more actual workflows, I'll explain those in a minute. Stick around later on in this video, you'll understand those. But this will actually determine if the speeds that are advertised here on the box, 10,000 megabytes per second, Yes, megabytes, not megabits, as someone always tells me in the comment section below. It's not megabits, it's megabytes. We're getting 10,371 megabytes per second, so that is actually exceeding the advertised speeds, which is very, very good. In terms of the Gen 5 drives, if we are looking at these here, you can see that this top section here are basically Gen 5. Okay, and then this one here, the green, is our Gen 5 drive there. And it's, you know, a little bit on the lower end of these. Obviously, I've tested more of the higher end Gen 5 drives that reach 14 or 13,000 plus speed. So that's why it looks in there. But you can see that the Gen 4 maxes out in here, and that's pretty much 7,000 megabytes per second. That's it. So we are about 50% better than the Gen 4 higher end drive. Then looking at the write speed, which 
is actually different from one terabyte to two terabytes. The two terabyte, because being bigger drive, it actually has a little bit of a higher write speed. But we'll talk about the SLC cache later on in the video, so stick around for that one. But we can see here that basically we are getting the same write speed as the Corsair MP700 speed in there. You can see here that Gen 4 drives, again, somewhere over there, doesn't get much better than that but then we are higher there. There are much higher Gen 5 speeds, and you're thinking, oh, this Kyoxia is not worth considering. You'll see in a minute that this actually throws the whole thing on its head, and you'll see why this might actually be worth it a lot more than you might think. So I'm getting 8,765 megabytes per second, which is plenty speed. Now some of the real world workflows. So this is where we're testing a quick system drive benchmark. This tests the drive as a secondary drive in your system. So you're not using it as you're operating or programs where, you know, things get a lot more heavy use. This is secondary drive where you store your games or your libraries. Now interesting thing here now is we're starting to blur a little bit of the line between Gen 4 and Gen 5 because not all drives are the same. And this is where the marketing lie most people fall for. You see the things on the box up to 10,000 megabytes per second and you think bigger the number, the better. Well, these benchmarks actually show you that not necessarily. Having the bigger number does not necessarily mean it is a better drive. For example, this drive in here that is just underneath the Kioxia one is a Samsung 990 EVO 2 terabyte drive, which actually operates PCA Gen 4 speeds. And as you can see that the difference here is very, very much the same. There's only a really a margin of error and it's not that impressive. So sometimes having a Gen 4 drive that's been released later with a newer controller might actually be better or be forming somewhere around the same as a Gen 5 drive there, which is very, very interesting. But at the same time, this Kioxia Gen 4 is roughly about the same as the Team Group TeamForce Z540, which is really a higher end Gen 5 drive. So I would say in terms of Gen 5 drives, it's somewhere in the lower of the pack, but in terms of Gen 4 drives, we're kind of blending now the top end Gen 4 and Gen 5 together with this Xeria Plus G4. Moving on to data drive benchmark, and this benchmark really shows you how good is the SSD storing data. So you're not really working on the secondary drive, but it's still not primary drive, it's the secondary drive, but storing data like loading stuff onto it and unloading stuff onto it how good this is in terms of gen 5 drives as you can see here again there is a huge distinction because the gen 5 drives being faster in terms of sequential speeds for data drive benchmarks you can see it starts to fall here on lower end of the drives and there is quite considerable jump here between these two as you can see there this gap here is considerably higher than anything else in there in terms of the Crucial P510, which is also a Gen 5 drive, the lowest end Gen 5 drive that I have tried, but we're not gonna talk about that because most likely you're not gonna be able to buy that very, very soon anymore because Crucial has gone out of the RAM business. So I don't know if they're taking the SSDs out as well, we don't know. But if you're looking at the higher end Gen 4, which would be roughly around there, and then our Gen 5 in there, this is roughly around 20 to 22 percent increase over that one if you look at the pricing that is absolutely interesting which i'll talk about in a minute as well now next off the full system drive benchmark this now shows you how good the ssd is when you're trying to use this for your operating system programs and the main drive that you install everything on in terms of programs and you actively working the drives that perform very well in this test are able to move very little files very fast all over the place, which not every drive can do. But now, suddenly it's not the lowest of the Gen 5. As you can see, the Team Group T Force Z540 here is lower. So is the Crucial P5110 in here. So it's higher than the lower end or some of the higher end actually. T Force Z540 is not particularly impressive. But then the other Gen five drives are considerably better. The Corsair MP700, which is not particularly new uh, Gen 5 drive, 
obviously Samsung, Prusial, SK Hynix, and Kingston Fury there at the very top, quite a bit better. So we're talking about 25% increase between the top and the bottom of the Gen 5 drive. So this here would be 25%. But then at the same time, if we are looking at the P44 Pro, for example, this bit there, then we are only about like the difference between the P44 Pro and this here is roughly about 10% increase over the Gen 4 drive. So the Gen 5 is 10% better, but when we get to the pricing again, that's very, very interesting. Now, before we talk about the pricing, the last benchmark that I'm gonna look at is the drive performance consistency test. And in here, this test runs about 20 hours. It's extremely heavy on the drive and we're really testing the absolute limits of the drive. We're filling the drive with hundreds of terabytes of data and really taking a lot of the drive's life out of it because we just wanna see how well does the drive maintain very, very heavy workloads. This is not particularly useful for you know everyday user, but someone who really wants to stretch the drive and use it for maybe very, very heavy video project file, uh, secondary SSD, where you're loading big files onto it, you're working with lots of big files on it, which means that it needs to read a lot of them all the time, and then you're reading from it, loading some more files onto it. How well does it last? Now here, in this test, the drives that have large capacity and the DRAM cache usually perform better because you're able to load the 100 terabytes of files and footage onto it a lot faster than just a drive that has you know, one terabyte versus eight terabyte of capacity and SLC and SLC caching, which we'll talk about in a minute as well. But here, now that's not really good news for Kioxia. As you can see, our drive is right on the bottom. I deleted some of the other um, very low end ones off here because it would really become useless because there's so much data. So I've left only 40 of the top entries and you can see it just performs the same as some of the mid-range Gen 4 drives. So as you can see, a Lexar NM790, which we have somewhere over here. There we go. This one here is actually performing quite a bit better. That's Gen 4 drive also without DRAM cache. It uses host memory buffer and so on. Some of these are very, very lower end. This here is a mid-range Gen 4 drive. And if we're looking at Gen 5 drives, even Gen 4 drives, look at the fire of 532 terabyte. That is a huge, huge difference in terms of performance in there. And why is that? fire of 532 terabyte drive, which is a Gen 4 drive, gets more than double the performance while being a Gen 4 drive, maintaining the same capacity, but being more than double the performance. Well, the FireQ 530 is exactly engineered to perform well in this test, but the Kioxia isn't. So what I would say is, if you're thinking about having heavy, heavy, heavy work done on the Kioxia, it's not a particularly good drive. Why is the pricing interesting? Well, because of the DRAM shortage that's happening in the world, the pricing for these drives is actually the same as the Gen 4 at the time of me recording this video. Go check out the pricing below and I would love to know what you're seeing and if you've seen the same thing where you're watching this from, please let me know. Check out the pricing of these in the description below and check what it costs on Amazon, for example, Newark, for example, for in your country. This Gen 5 drive costs the same as roughly a Gen 4 drive, a Samsung Gen 4 drive. Well, that's not Gen 4. This one, a 990 Pro, for example, or the Lexer NM790, the pricing is the same. Well, if the pricing is the same, buy the Gen 5 drive because we're getting 10 to 20% extra performance for the same amount of money. Why go with the Gen 4? The only thing to consider here is if your actual PC platform supports Gen 5. If you're on one of the earlier version of the CPU platform, so uh, Intel 14th Gen, 13th Gen, or Ryzen 7000, then you might be losing some of the bandwidth for some of these other, for example, your GPU might not get the whole bandwidth because your secondary SSD is not supposed to be Gen 5 as well. You're running out of PCI lanes, but if you're running like the Core Ultra or Ryzen 9000, then you can actually have a secondary drive or a primary drive Gen 5 as well without losing any bandwidth, which is absolutely 
amazing and worth checking out. So what about the endurance of the drive? Now I'm happy to announce that this Kioxio has 600 terabyte written spec for one terabyte model and 1200 terabyte for the two terabyte model, which is just the industry standard. What we're seeing across Samsung and WD drives is just exactly the same. It's nothing extra or nothing less. You're not getting skimmed by getting a very, very like bad terabyte written spec that we get in some with some of the crucial drives for example crucial ssd some of them look good but looking at the terabyte written spec for example the p310 or p510 even they're not industry standard they're lower than that so just bear that in mind so if you want to use this as your project drive as in video editor for example know that you know this drive will last you a long time then the last bit to talk about is the slc cache now what is that if you don't know each drive of the ssds has basically the first pool it can accept the fast speeds what's advertised on the box not the whole capacity of the drive it's got this buffer so once that buffer runs out it's going to drop considerably all the way down to like 700 megabytes per second or 1000 megabytes per second which is like 10 to 12 times lower than what is advertised for this. And that happens with pretty much every single drive. And this drive here has, on the two terabyte one, has the SLC cache puffer at 408 terabytes. As you can see, there's some other ones that I've found in there, if you're particularly interested in that. But someone who is a video editor, for example, and you're unloading footage onto the SSD, and let's say your project is more than 400 gigabytes let's say it's one terabyte it's an absolutely massive shot that you shoot that you're doing or using black magic cameras or some raw footage that just takes a lot of files and you want to load it onto this one once you go to the 400 gigabytes the rest of your one terabyte so the next 600 gigabytes that you're trying to load onto it will just drop the speed and your drive will just take about 10 to 12 times as long as like the first part of what you just copied across, which is really, really frustrating. But not everybody needs to transfer files over 400 gigabytes at one go. But just bear that in mind if you want to do that, or if that is part of your workflow, maybe not get this one, but get something that's a little bit better or suited for that one. For example, Kingston Fury Renegade Gen 5 drive, the eight terabyte drive of this one, very expensive, but you can write 2.7 terabytes files on it just sequentially without it losing any of the speed. It's absolutely insane. So overall, what is the conclusion of this? I would say that this puts uh, the SSD market in a very, very interesting position, especially if you're looking to upgrade or you need more storage. Check out the pricing for this one first because you might get a better performance than the Gen 4 drives for this Gen 5. And perhaps that's why Kioxia had the naming a little bit different here that is a plus g4 so it's basically the gen 4 performance on a gen 5 form factor but at the same price point so but a little bit better so it's worth buying if the pricing is the same between the high-end gen 4 drive versus this one then most of the cases i think this is worth it and it puts it in a very interesting place kiox usually does a lot of like commercial things and server grade stuff but some of their actual consumer parts are very interesting as well very interesting to check out and hopefully we're gonna check more of these out if you enjoyed this video hit that like button it actually makes a difference subscribe if you haven't already and if you enjoyed this video perhaps you also want to check out the samsung 990 pro 8 terabyte version the 8 terabyte version how good is it is it actually worth buying because sometimes high capacity is not necessarily better well do you know what is better you hitting that subscribe button thanks guys for watching Bye bye